All right, so today we're gonna to talk about painting photon printed resin models. Um, one thing that, as it gets a little bit more accepted these days, a lot, I mean, a lot of people in the community are either for it or against 3D printed models as it is, but as technology gets better, it becomes a little bit more interesting. Either it saves some money or print some bits so to maybe have a devastator and you want the full kit just to be able to swap them out with magnets and stuff like that but you don't want to have to buy a whole another devastator kit to get all the other bits that you might not already have because you maybe bought the even devastator off of ebay um or you don't have to buy a blister kit to upgrade a certain unit um and spend 15 20 bucks doing that um where you can have it 3d printed um, I had a friend of mine who is also big in the hobby, but he takes a different approach. He likes to 3D print. He loves the, um, the tinkering with the modeling and stuff like that. Um, and at first he was using an MD, uh, I think it's FDM, which is the one that prints out with the filament. And this one he just got into is a resin print model. So... As you can see here, um, this is kind of what it looks like. I don't know if I can get close enough for you to where you kind of see the detail of it, but maybe I can show you later in, in some stills. But um, you can kind of see some detail right there. But these are a lot more detailed pieces um, than you would normally see in um, an FDM print. So we're gonna we're gonna explore that. I'm gonna. Sub-assemble it, which is already sub-assemble for me anyways. Um, clean up a little bit, maybe do a little bit of sanding. Um, prime them, and then we'll kind of check in from there and start painting it. And so we can see the difference between an actual model uh, that you get from GW and what you can achieve through printing. Um, we'll just go from there, guys. Alrighty.
All right, so we got, you know, the airbrushing done and a base. Like, I got the uh, priming done, pre-shading, and the um, basing done. So I'm going to start off hit some wash up on this guy. So far, though, it looks pretty good. Um, you could tell I'm probably not in this lighting. I'll have to get some better shots in the lighting later. Um, but this is looking really good um, so far. And I'm actually really impressed with the quality compared to some of the other um, 3D printed, you know, um, maybe you don't know, 3D printed models I've actually painted in the past. And I haven't had my hands on many. Um, mainly some like proxy, um, what's it called, um, vehicles and stuff like that, like a Rhino, um, a Halbrut and stuff like that. I've used uh, 3D printed uh, proxies because of the FDM, um, it usually does really well with bigger models and vehicles because they don't have too much detail on them. Um, so you can kind of get away with a decent looking proxy that way versus your miniature Marines and stuff like that. They have, they have a little bit of rougher time getting away with that because the, um, um, the details is not as good as these are. And this is turning out phenomenal. I'm actually really impressed. Um, uh, thanks again to my buddy. His, uh, Josh Taylor is my buddy. He's the one who got into the uh, anti-cubic photon printer. Um, and he's uh, lending me a couple of his demo prints for me to paint and stuff to see if he can get you know, certain things down right. So we're, right now we're making a corn... This is a corn berserker, um, which is a throwback to my very first... Uh, army I ever had so I took the chance to ask for a corn berserker to see how that would turn out and oh man this is pretty cool so far so I'm throwing some um like I said throwing some care bug crimson on these uh, models on these pieces to pull out some more of these details I think I put a little bit too much uh, base coat on there I'm used to, since this is a resin based model, I'm used to resin soaking in paint like crazy. Um, but this didn't really soak it in like, you know, what we're used to with fine cast resin prints and stuff like that. So that's something to think about when you are painting your um, FDM, FDM, your uh, photon printed model. So um, that should be good. This is gonna look killer when it's done. I guarantee it. So, um, put that back up there. Get this face washed up too. Put a little bit too much wash on there. I have to clean it up in there in a second. Um, but guys, I mean, tell me what you think. What is y'all's opinion about 3D models, 3D printed models in the um, in our hobby? Cause I know it's a touchy subject, um, but I like to, you know, hear from you guys too. Leave a comment down there. Let me know how you feel about it. Um, most of the time, um, I think some people are indifferent uh, with it if you're using it as a um, proxy. I know, in my opinion, where I stand is I don't really care. The uh, You're gonna spend just as much money really buying the printer and a lot more time printing them than you would buying them and painting them. So it's a, it's a work of art all on its own, as it is. So if you got that kind of dedication, more power to you. Um, I don't think I could ever fathom myself becoming a modeler and um, 3D printing kind of guy. Um, Although if I did get good at modeling and did have a 3D printer, I would probably print way too many models and just start printing models just so I could paint them, just to have a painted 
model. Like, they got certain busts or, you know, my favorite Star Wars characters and stuff like that just so I can paint them. Um, which I'm pretty sure I might be asking Josh for some of that stuff later on. You know, hopefully he can give me a pretty good deal on some certain prints. It'd be really cool, though. Have, yeah, like, the Luke Skywalker and, uh, or Darth Vader, that kind of stuff. Or some of my favorite, uh, you know, planes, or none really planes, but vehicles, spaceships, the X-Wing, and the, y and the y wing and all that stuff, the TIE Fighter. Um, that's my collection of knickknacks and stuff. And I get to paint them, which is cool, because I love painting. Um, all right, so we got the shading done. Let me touch up this one right here. Getting something in there. Cool. All right, yeah, so you can see, like, this is starting to look really cool. Um, and I think this is going to work out better than I thought. I knew it was going to be better than the FDM, but, like, this is just grossly better in detail. All right. <clears throat> I'll get back with you if these dry. All right, so shade is dried. And we're going to now get some dry brushing done on this guy. I like to use some actual Seville dry brush paint. Kind of simplifies it a little bit. And I got a pretty unique, you know, uh, I guess you don't know, or you could know. Uh, they have a unique little selection of colors that kind of give some pretty cool um, highlights by using them. Um, this is how I like to do highlights on my normal painting. So, I like to wipe it off of my hand like this right here, by the way. I'll take a brush and kind of work it in. All right, so I got some gold, as you can call it. Actually, this is more of a brass, a copper brass. I prefer this over gold. Um, just seems more age-like. And since these guys, these chaos followers have been around forever, it seems that it would be a better... Um, Solution. Let me pull this camera up so you can see me paint actually up here. There you go, guys. Alright, so, um, the. That it would actually be more of a copper brass looking old age gold now than ever. And I really like highlighting copper more. And I like gold because gold gets a little too yellowy copper you can actually get a little bit more goldy as, <laughs> for lack of better terms um you know highlighting it it's a totally different world when it comes to that, that that just highlighting copper or brass or whatever you want to call this um Probably should have. I like painting more with a flat brush than I do a round brush, but I've been taking a liking to this brush a lot. You can also highlight, if you're going to do aged copper, you can do a little bit of uh, nickeling on it, which is a pretty cool little thing to do to kind of get that age feel. Because I guess the, the Chaos Wars have been around for well, well, longer than 10,000 years, but the, uh, the the military, the Marines themselves, they've been corrupted for about 10,000 years. I'm sure there's a lot of this armor gets passed down too. At least that's how I like to think of the lore in my head. Man, it just brings back memories of me actually having a corn army. It was... So my first army was actually um, Primaris. I bought some Smurfs. I, bought, I got bought in with a box with a buddy into some um, Death Guard. But I didn't like them. I just couldn't get into them or anything like that. And... 
I don't know. Just, it didn't really expand for me. Then a buddy of mine offered me a trade of Primaris for corn. And I was like, holy crap. Okay, cool. I'll give it a shot. I loved it, dude. I loved it. I think I was more ready for a melee army than I was a shooty army. And now I have a shooty army, too. I have a... I have... Uh, Death Guard, which is more shooty than they are melee, but they got some really nasty melee too. You can really run them either way, but you, if you're gonna run a melee, you're running elite heavy, big time. Um, which ironically, the elites are not that costly um, compared to most other armies. So, but yeah. All right, so you can start seeing that brass show up nice and beautifully in here there's a couple spots I have to go back and clean up I'll let the brush touch over all right yeah all right so you can probably see the brass starting to show up through there it's looking good. Um, I got some stuff too in my hand. All right, so that should be the body part. I want to paint the rest of the gold once I have them on the marine. I just wanted to get all the trimmings without having anything in the way. Um, but once I get everything put together, I will show you what that looks like. All right, so we got the model put together. I did a little bit of silver on this bat bat, but you see he's coming together. He looks great so far. And um, we're going to finish painting him up and then go from there. So I'm going to put some gold here, maybe some gold trimming right there, get his axe handle painted up pretty cool, maybe get some nice effects, and then weather out his silver blades and his helmet as well. So I'll let you know what's going on. We'll be right back with you. All right, so guys, not gonna lie. This looks pretty rad for a 3D printed model. So, I don't know if you can really see what's going on there. I don't know how to really good lighting in this room. Need to get better on that. But still, from this glance, me showing you on camera, you can't really tell it's 3D printed. You know what I'm saying? But there's a couple flaws, like his hand got a little messed up and you kind of see a little gouge and I'm going to take some stills and I'll add them to the end of the video but you really cannot tell that this is a 3d printed model without two particular flaws on this on this particular print the hand like I said earlier is a little melted and on his chest you might be able to see here just some vertical little lines they can't I couldn't paint out but I'm pretty sure settings could fix that and over time or even sooner than later it's gonna look like a flawless chaos space marine berserker it brings a whole new element to the table um folks that might be more engineering savvy could probably model up some cool looking version of what we play with, kind of scale up some of the weapons and kind of make them look goofy. They can really customize what they got going on, and I think that's pretty cool. Um, I mean, hell, I would like to see some 3D printed orcs that are, or at least the weapons, the arms, with like the big chopper. That is actually a big chopper. That would be awesome. I don't know. I can't hate it. I can only love it. But like I said, in the comments, guys, tell me what you guys think. Um, I'm going to finish up on base, put, get the base finished up, um, some finished little technical paint touches and I'm going to get some stills and then we'll revisit.